Absolutely is a big deal because he performed out of his skin in the qualifiers when it counts. And a lot of people said, you know, he stepped up. This is his third World Champions for watch as well. So we'll see whether he can deliver this time around. He feels there's a lot of pressure on himself. Zillion bad. No surprises. This time around is from Najin Whiteshield. Jinx banned out. He was, of course, a Minerva's champion he played throughout those qualifiers. So a little bit of research coming out from Najin Whiteshield here against Kaboom. Yeah, simply just target some comfort picks here. And then the Maokai ban. Nigerian White, Nigerian White Shield in their regionals, every single game, 10 out of 10, they banned Maokai. Safe, he doesn't play it, we've seen him use it once in Korea. They did win the game, but it's not his style of champion. Whoa. He wants to play carry top laner, so this Maokai ban is going to be banned by White Shield pretty much every single game. Everybody talks about uh, Goong and his assassins, though. First pick Zed, that is not too shabby, especially in a game where we expect there, there to be you know, some early kills and some solo kills here. Goong on, on uh, Zed is going to be very That's scary. confidence right from the start. Oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a simple confidence pick. I can pick this completely blind into whatever you choose. Also, Zed doesn't actually have that many bad matchups mm. right now. So it's definitely of the champions, very easy yeah. to blind pick. I mean, Zillion has been banned already, which would be one of, the, one of them who can mess you up in a team fight. And obviously, Tin owns as well. He showed his Orianna in the qualifier, was great which is not really a matchup you're afraid of if you're playing Zed. So easy first pick coming in from Goong. And I've actually seen Save play Zed top lane as well. So it could be a bit of a flex pick here for White Shield. It doesn't have to go mid lane straight up. It was in solo queue, don't worry. <laughs> well, he, I'm pretty sure he played one professionally as well. Okay. But yeah, top lane Zed is always an option. The Kale response, though. I mean, there's the like, top lane Cassidy. We always like the, the Kale response to the uh, Zed picks there. So you don't have to use an exhaust. You can use the intervention. But the thing is, that's a Kale pick, possibly in the top lane. And it is one of Save's big champions. He went 4 and 1 in that on Kale. So he knows exactly what he's up against if that is a Kale in the top lane. And taking away Kha'Zix here, mousing over this jungle Kha'Zix for a watch. I would be very excited because Lee Sin's already banned out. This should push Danagorn onto Vi, one of my personal favorite champions, and also a champion uh, that you can combo with a mid lane like Syndra for that level six kill. And let's just talk briefly about Nigel White Shield and the kind of comps they, they run a lot. They often run without any kind of hard engage. And the way they actually get kills and push objectives is by controlling minion waves and then they rotate between the lanes extremely fast and they can dive onto Whoa. you on the towers here. They often <laughs> run with a lot of single target CC. You have Thresh already locked in, a lot of burst potential single target. You have Kha'Zix locked in as the jungler and you just go to this tower here. You have the numbers advantage. You land a hook, you land some CC, you kill down the first target and then you take the towers. Also, they love picking people off before they head to the towers. Kha'Zix and Zed, perfect at Again, getting a solo kill it. Exactly. And grabbing one of those. I've, I just feel disappointed and upset for Gorilla. Oh, you fresh, know, man. Where's the Jenna, man? Where's the Jenna? <laughs> he said, I want to show the world Jenna. So everybody stole it from him in time. Think about he's that just, is. He's, in a, he's grown, in upset. He's going for Thresh. Thresh is one of his main champions. Yeah. He's yeah. Seven, main champion. He's <laughs> seven and two yeah. on Thresh, okay? Yes, he was the one, you know, on the forefront of this Jenna just tidal wave of Jenna players over here uh, for the group stages, and he wanted to show everybody. But Thresh, this was the original go-to for him. And just look again, look at the lineup here from White Shield. It is there is no real hard engage, because they don't play Maokai, it was one of the hard engage top laners you can have here. They don't play it. Instead, you can do one, three, one split push now. Zed in one lane, Rise in the other side lane, and then you have Corky sitting in mid lane with the car six pick as well. And you just split up the enemy team. You push down every single wave. You go for these one-on-one -on -one kills. As soon as you get one kill, or you force two members from the team to defend one of the side lanes, instantly you collapse on the mid lane, take the tower here and watch he's a jungler again also from talking with their players who's been screaming white shield he actually doesn't sit in his own jungle he walks into your jungle wards everything and then he just takes over the entire jungle which means when you have these split pushers going and you're pushing down every lane and you have your jungler already sitting in the enemy jungle you have full control of the map and it's impossible to move around and react in time i like white shield <laughs> Pick we can Jana. tell. Picking Janna <laughs> against Gorilla. There you go. That's that's. We'll see how that one works out. I'm not sure if he'd be happy about that, but nonetheless, we're going to see it out. I'm interested also. A Kale versus Rise in the top lane. Surely that's going to be shoved straight on towards safe. 
That kill can just push the lane pretty much non-stop. You just have to be careful. There's not going to be a gank, which is why we can see Danagorn look towards the top lane early on, buy time for Lep to just constantly push in the top lane and apply pressure on right. Lep's actually got to be careful pretty early on, too, because if Save starts with that mana crystal, he can trade extremely effectively. Oh, yeah, yeah. You sure. can bully down. A level one especially, you can take advantage of Kale. This rise is very, very dangerous early it's in the It's all match. about for Lep just pushing the lane, pushing the lane. Don't take a bad trade. Try and deny farm by pushing Save down. And then you can potentially go for a dive because you do have Kale and Elise. It's a great dive combo, especially at level six for Kale with you when you have the ulti. Reset Tower Acro for Elise and then try and kill safe. I and like ignore the rest of the map. Only kill safe. <laughs> Well, so what do we think? What do we think overall? Obviously, Nagin White Shield coming into this one. Gigantic favorites. No doubt about that one. Team comps coming in there. Do we see anything? Maybe a saving light for the Kaboom guys. A lot of fans out there. Go Kaboom. Hashtag is uh, a big deal. So they do have Janna on their team. But the thing is, Nagin White Shield, they like to jump in and jump out very quickly anyway. So Zed and Kha'Zix, if they can jump in, kill somebody really quickly, there might not even be time for Dan to actually save their target. So Lep, it's going to be on Kale to have very quick timing with his Kale ultis. Well, as we load into the game, head over to Twitter and tell us what you think. Of course, who will win this matchup? Tweet us hashtag NWSWin or hashtag KBMWin. Or go kaboom, whichever you prefer, <laughs> at LOL Esports, and we'll check out your votes in the game. Prefer KBM win, though. <laughs> KBM win. Well, looking on the side of kaboom here, they have a lot of options in the mid game because Tinon, he can go DFG as his first item. You have the Lucian pick up as well, very strong in the mid game. Same goes for Corky on the side of Sephir, though. But still, there's some mid game options here for kaboom to try and look for a snowball, to be honest. And the thing I really like about the comp here from Kaboom is this is actually kind of a Najin Shield comp here. They've got oh, yeah. five ranged champions. One of my favorite comps from Najin White Shield was their five ranged uh, composition where they dealt with hard engage by kiting backwards and single target switching, calling target switches very, very quickly. So this is actually, they're playing sort of the same style of game here and it's going to come down to execution. And it gives a lot of wave clear on the side as well because you uh -oh. have the kill pick. Just gonna check and save here, not a lot is gonna happen. But a lot of wave clear as well inside of Kaboom here, and a lot of options to deal with Goon in a team fight. It's gonna be all about Lep trying to handle one on one against Goon in the late game if we're gonna get to that point with the split push going on. And when we do get there, like we said, it's gonna be all about the timings of those ultimates because they don't have exhaust. Look at this. Is Minerva going to stick around in the mid lane? I wonder. Showing himself on Gungi. He's going to head down towards the bottom. But he stayed he's there a strong. very long time. Should get in time. Dance is coming up. Or are they going to go for a change? This... I don't know. Well, it looks like they're just going to do a regular start here. Double down bottom. I have to say, though, that no exhaust is very worrying against a double assassin team here. So what happened here at level 1 was actually Night and Wide Shield wants to make sure to get standard lanes. If you look at your minimap, all the way down the bottom lane, you see a ward by White Shield in the, in the lane bush. Simply to spot in if they can see Minerva and Dance move in to start the early push, and then they know they're in the bottom lane, and they can go down and get the 2v2 lane. What's super rare, though, is they, they actually leased red, leased red buff to give Jungler a much easier start. So they get shoved in. See how that plays out. If you've just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, this is game two getting underway. Group D, Najin White Shield versus Kaboom. Fly straight away from Gorilla on Minerva there. Bottom lane, if you haven't seen it before, it is Zephyr on Corky and Gorilla on Thresh versus the Brazilians. Minerva on Lucian versus Danz on Janna. And look how Gorilla was able to take free control oh, of, this, of oh. this lane there. He shoved it up with his Targon oh. and gets another play. Wow, there's a lot of damage on Minerva. I'm not sure if they were responding quickly to that one. A double play working wonders for Gorilla. Death Sentence does not land. Never, ever, ever stand next to your AD carry if you're the support against the Thresh, especially not in the early levels, because he can walk up too easily, get double flay, both members, and you automatically win the trade because Thresh got the two members flayed over here. Easy times for Sapphire. And even though they were leashing the red buff, they managed to get the push going because they were so aggressive in the trades. Now they got the early level too. So double buffs for both junglers. Watch on Kha'Zix versus Danagon on Elise. We'll see how it works out, but he's Lep in the top lane, putting the damage down on Save. Save quickly turns down with a Rune Prison, blast on towards him. It's a pretty even trade between the two. Looks like they've got extra warding here for Nads and White Shield. 
but Lep is working without that bush ward. Watch on the top side, completely ignoring it. They're going to let Save get pushed to his turret and just try and CS at his turret because he still does have half a mana bar. And look at his top lane here. We talked about how Lep, he wants to just push the lane from the start, deny farm, or at least make Save lose some farm onto this tower here. And you actually saw Danagorn instantly start his blue buff, go red buff, and be on the top side of the map to make sure if Watch was there for an early gank, he would be able to counter gank. He's going to get and sadly, forward. he's gone back into his jungle, and now Watch is coming towards the top lane. Oh, the death sentence lands on Danza once again. Zephyr goes in for it. They fly up and over the Ignite goes down. Zephyr's the secret target they wanted. Danza gets away, and they cover it off. Meanwhile, that was happening. We did see, of course, the top lane was pushed in. Lep gets away cleanly from Watch. Yeah, they got the flash, though, so not too clean. He had to burn a very long cooldown, and that opens up some opportunity because he's going to be shoving constantly now without the flash, they have to be very careful with their warding. Uh, Danz is going to have to help him with that. And down this bottom lane, it was a little bit too easy for Gorilla to just stand in the bush here. There was no wards from Kaboom, even though actually both members had the trinket ward ready. You have to watch your side bush here against the Thresh because if you give him full control of the bush, he will always land the hooks and he will just deny you. He will force you to stand onto your tower and just wait for the minions. Danagorn, he's really counting on this gank, though. They feel like it's going to come up to the top side because it's a Kale, flashless, constantly shoving here. So he's just waiting in this top side. And it hasn't paid off yet because Watch hasn't gotten up there. Save does have his flash, though. So it would be very easy for them to set up a gank before Kale hits level 6. I wonder if it's counter coverage. Uh, the flash was just burned. Watch is now heading up there for a return trip, but immediately backs off. Doesn't go for it. It does mean that Kaboom are safe for now in that top lane. Lep wards out the river. They will spot him out. And Tinone's also putting that ping down. He was spotted, though. Yeah, there's that ward coverage. The whole team was going to have to help Lep with that defensive vision control. And they do finally secure this top side for him. However, it costs Danagorn so much time. Danagorn constantly camping up in this top side bush. Whereas Watch would take a camp, come up for a small window of time, and then return to the jungle, take another camp. So the reason Watch actually didn't go for the gank itself was also because Nigel White Shield is calling the bluff here from Kaboom. Lep was sitting with his ward, and he didn't place it. He just kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. He didn't care. So they knew, okay, if you're this aggressive, you have backup. It is 100% sure. Ooh. And until he actually walked down and warded, they knew now Danagorn was gone. Oh, 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 the Death Sentence, surely. Can they lock on towards him? First blood is imminent. They're going to flash for it. Zephyr gets it. And now Danz has turned the focus. He's put pressure on. Now we're going to see Tinones. Can he make a revenge? He's roaming down. He does have level 6 ready, but they've got a minion line to protect him. Yeah, that's perfect timing. Najin White Shield back off. The minion line will block any charms that he can try and throw through there. And that actually buys time in the mid lane for Gung to farm. I have to say, Gorilla is just manhandling this bottom lane. Flay after Flay after Flay, constantly walking up, setting up his own hooks. Beautiful play so far from Gorilla. He is, his play is definitely holding over from that gauntlet. Again, though, Kaboom is not respecting the wards down this bottom lane. Let's see what happens here. They want to go for Gung, and he just dashes over the wall. Protecting that pink ward, it does mean the watch is nearby. Danagorn actually ooh, nearly went out of position and he put himself into harm's way as watch comes down to cover off Goon. And I still wonder if Tinon's in this mid lane want to get an early DFG. Of course he's getting the armor. He wants to have it early against Zed. You want to have your hourglass ready. Otherwise Zed can just all in you if you don't have the Kale ulti to save you. But again, down this bottom lane. Kaboom is not respecting the presence Gorilla has in the lane. They're not warding enough in the side bushes, so he can just walk into the bush, force them back every single time, and then he can land an easy hook or land a flay. Oh, here's the second one. Just like that, Gorilla goes in once again. The flay is down. The Ignite's going. They're going to tower dive in. The Ignite's burning. Zephyr goes for it. One more shot should do it. There it is. He will take tower damage. In comes Danz. He's got the support of Danagorn. Can they lock on towards him? Howling Gales was required to shut them off. He hasn't got level 6 yet. Hasn't got that monsoon. Watch comes across. Tinones misses the charm, and they disengage. And people wonder why there's no Janna pick coming in from Gorilla. He's actually only picking Janna when Thresh is banned. Every single time it's open, he will pick it. And we're seeing why in this game. That's a very, very uh, good pink ward to place too. Whenever you gain control of the bottom lane, getting down one of those pink wards to ensure not only that you'll have vision of the gank, but you can also control the entire river if you have control of that lane. And we saw why there. Getting these hooks from Fog of War have been Pretty much the whole story of the bottom. So 
Watch smiting out. He's clearing his lane. Gung taking some more damage from Tin Owens, who's held his own so far in this mid lane. But Gung, with the farm advantage, is not a good sign as Zed versus Ari. Zed versus Ari is such an interesting matchup, too, because post level six, it's all about uh, can Ari time the charm with Zed's ultimate? Because every time now, you know he's going where he's going to spawn behind you. Whoa! Oh, they're gonna try and turn this one around. Gorilla took a bit of damage this time around. Will get slowed down. The double tap from Minerva, not gonna be enough. Flash away from that dead center. Zephyr still going aggressive. This is tricky, tricky play between the two, but he has the damage to back it up. There goes the Howling Gale to knock him away. And that was a fairly even trade this time around between the two. Yeah, a lot of damage here back and forth. Gorilla actually walked into the minions, had all the minions on him as well, but then he just flashed away. Managed actually to force a flash as well. Let's see what happens. So he didn't flash himself, forced a flash from Kaboom. Also, they called in watch down bottom because they had that pink ward, that control over the bottom lane, the full vision, just in case any, anything from Kaboom, if there was any uh, aggression to come backwards. And both top laners have used the teleport. They know Danagorn has been up in his top side for pretty much the entire game long. So if you get one kill in this bottom lane, instantly you can just rush Dragon, pick it up here, get even more gold. You see, White Shield still staying around. They want to see where Elise is. And you can tell, Danagorn, he's only up here looking for counter ganks because as soon as they saw Watch was down in the Dragon Side River, he backed off. Now he's waiting around to see if uh, Save will uh -oh. open then. He's going to have to use Spirit Rush to get out of this one. So Tino's ultimate is down. That does buy them time. Tries to go back in a little bit aggressive there. Danagorn. Oh, Save's pretty far up. Kaboom is respecting Save too much. Lip was doing fine in a one-on-one. -on -one. I know you want to shut down the Ryze so early oh, on. He's, not, he's in trouble. He's had to flash out of that one. He's going to get flayed up. There's the ultimate from Goom. Everybody piles in. Gorilla took a lot of damage towards the end there. Now they're going for save. Cocoon dodged out of nicely by save, and he is away free. I love that mind game from Danagorn, though. You can see what he was attempting to do. Flashes in with the Q instead of flashing in with the Cocoon, and then tries to hit the post-flash Cocoon. But he missed that anyways, didn't matter. And the answer, obviously, from Natural White Shield is going to be the Dragon, because the jungler showed up top and failed the game. Yeah, okay. White Shield has just been staying around this Dragon for the last two or three minutes. Watch has just been sitting in the river, waiting to see where Elise was on the map, instantly go for gank mid lane and take the Dragon here. So all their time, Kaboom is investing into trying to kill Save in this top lane. Didn't pay off yet. They haven't got zero counter ganks from it. Forced his flash, so now we actually need to see Danagorn come back to the top lane and try and kill save if the Warner get anything from all the time invested up there. Well, this bottom lane is a serious problem. When all three lanes are stepping up and winning, it becomes a gigantic problem. Zephyr trading with Minerva once again. He went aggressive for this one. Forces Zephyr to... Valkyrie away. Danagorn, though. Oh, they're collapsing on towards him. He doesn't get caught by the voice spikes. That won't slow him down. Throws out the cocoon, which will not land. This is a tricky back and forth. Goon fancies this one. Puts a lot of damage on towards Danagorn. If he can take the jungler down, manages to repel away. Gets caught out. He's not safe, though. The rest of his team not backing him up. Watch jumps in. And that pulls out the monsoon. Lep in the top lane. Safe going aggressive with him. Seems to have his number now in that top lane as well. And every time we see a fight in the bottom side of the map, oh, White Shield him. is there instantly. He's going straight in for it. Death Sensors does not land. The Ignite is down. That's going to force Minerva away. But the aggression from Najin White Shield now is very much on. Watch comes around, tries to lock in towards Minerva. Fight oh! the boy spikes. I don't think he realized it till too late. And doesn't follow up. Yeah, he doesn't have flash, so uh, no. Okay, oh, here goes dive. Oh, dive on the tower. Goong, is he going to have enough? That's the question. Tinnons gets popped down, takes himself the shadow, completely falls the cameraman, and gets away clean. <laughs> so much damage from Zed here. If you don't manage to land the charm, as you pointed out earlier, he will be able to kill you during his ulti here. Watch, taking over the enemy jungle now. Up in his top lane. Danagon looking for another gang on to save. They're both going in towards him. Have they got enough this time around? It doesn't look like it. They're going to try and lock around. Watch will come around. They're going to clean out that blue buff. Save. All oh! Oh, the cocoon this time, Nance. Will it be the first? Kill, kill it well! And kaboom! Finally strike on that in White Shield. So they managed to get a kill in this top lane now. On to save. They've been there so many times. Now they get the kill. Gorilla's already up in his top lane because the bottom lane, Sefa, he can handle himself. Time for Gorilla to roam around. You also see the early mobility boots for him on the 
on his thresh. Well, the gorilla is absolutely the king of the jungle, so ah. he can just go around and ward out wherever he likes. Did you pre-plan it? All right, so we do have to say that right there, that single move was a very bold move from Save. That was an over-aggressive move, trying to walk back through the turret to his lane. However, he was already 30 CS up in this Lead up in this lane. So that's already a full kill's worth of gold right there for him. This prize is going to be a huge, huge problem later in the game. And he was already bullying his lane in just the mana building phase of Rise. He didn't even have completed items yet. There is a giant gap building between these teams and Kaboom. Are seriously being left behind. Danagorn taking some bursts from Gungna. 140 to 108 CS in the mid lane, 126 to 93 in the top lane. The closest is ironically where all the action was happening early on, down in that bottom lane between Zephyr and Minerva. But the problem is, it's a 2-0 Zephyr who's just about to complete his Trinity Force while, well, you can see Minerva is a long way off his first item. And once White Shield, White Shield gets the lead, it's just gonna be push every single lane, take uh -oh. over your jungle. We talked about in Champs like they're going for the level in top. It's lane. a three-man pylon on towards a Kale, which is tricky in itself, but they handle the crowd control very well. Uh-oh, Danagon comes around. He didn't want to join this party. He was not invited. Najin White Shield take him down. This is a 2v1 on the bottom lane, though. Zephyr and Minerva with this dance. Do catch him with a Howling Gale, but it's so disjointed they're not going in at the same time. Perhaps the biggest story here, while all that action happened top lane, Zephyr is one versus two and winning. Chases both of them off of this turret. He's that far ahead. We even see on the other side of Kaboom here, Minerva is actually trying to get some early power by getting the Brutalizer, even going towards the Blade of the Rune King now, just to get some early power, and yet he can't do enough. Lib up in this top lane. I mean, yes, he's Kale, he has Salty, but there's nobody else there to save him. And this is why you like to see bottom lanes. When your bottom lane gets so far ahead, it's have your support start roaming really early on. You mentioned the early mobility boots from Gorilla. He has been everywhere, creating plays in mid lane, creating plays up top, and it's a very easy dive when you have three versus one. So, Najin White Shield turning on the power that they showed in their qualifying stages to reach this World Championships, proving exactly why they are the number three seed from the OGN champions. Najin White Shield, can they close this game out? That's the question. That's the big question right now. 7,000 gold lead. They were coming into this game, gigantic favorites. But can they close the game out quick enough? I mean, it, obviously, it doesn't matter in the end of the day. A win's a win. But we're looking at Samsung White. We're seeing how quick they were destroying opponents yeah. last week. That is what they're going to be judged on, especially in the green scene itself. And Kaboom are putting up a, a very good fight here. They they said that the one thing they wanted to do at Worlds was play Korean teams. When I interviewed Tin Owens after they qualified, his first answer was, I'm just looking forward to playing any Korean team. He didn't even care which one it was. So he's very happy for Kaboom to be in this game and learning what they can from Magic White Shield play. Yeah, I mean, just playing against them, actually feeling the pressure they can apply to you, feeling how they can completely choke you out of the game by just taking over your own jungle, push up every single lane, just getting the feeling will make you understand it once you go back and watch the replay. So Kaboom can really use this as a learning experience. See how Najin, Najin White Shield is playing against them, use it themselves, or try and use it themselves once they come back in the Brazil, or obviously playing in Brazil, but it's not over yet for them. This is only the first game in a group stage. Well, it's a four-man push from Najin White Shield as they drive on up that mid lane. Only Dan's and Tinone's there to defend them and clear out that wave, but it will be enough to back them off for now. So top lane, save. Has been going head to head. Goom caught out with the charm and just immediately turns that aggression round on towards Tino. Is the Zonya's out? That's enough to force him away. The Death Center's lands back on it. In goes Gorilla. Monsoon forces them away. And this time, for first time ever, Najin White Shield's ultimate is off point. That was a really good disengage by Kaboom here. We had Dan's one. Oh, the cocoon lands on Zephyr. Have they got enough to turn this back around though? Danagon, he's repelled, but he's got nowhere to go. Comes back down. He's saved by. The top lane of left, Zephyr will turn this around. 
Close, close fights right now. This is a little <laughs> bit of overconfidence coming out from Naji White Shield. Well, they definitely have the power to back oh, up. Lev. Oh, Lev just goes straight in. He's not got his ultimate available. He just used it at moment to go to save Danagorn. And that's an easy, easy pickup for save. Yeah, once you lose control of your jungle, you can just run from mid lane to top lane and just feel like there's nobody waiting for you. Just keep. Oh, you need to tell yourself every single time I walk into my own jungle, I'm going to die. So the way, <laughs> the way you have to move is simply by going back to your base, actually, and take the safe way up to the top lane, unless you can get some wards in your own jungle yourself here. Yeah, and you can tell he was trying to place a ward in that bush, but he wanted to place it in a good spot that would have a lot of vision uh, coverage. However, that meant that he had to get too close to the bush. And actually, you just need to put your ward at the very edge of it without stepping too close. Because this is a very, very bad Nigel White Shield team. So they definitely have a huge upper hand right now if they meet you in any sort of even terms. Even terms that are slightly in your favor, then they can easily, easily kill you. Yeah, the one uh, or two wards we now see in the top side of the jungle from Kaboom are really smart. Especially the one close to their own base because it means you can actually now run from mid lane to top lane as long as you can take the long way around. Don't walk straight into your own jungle, yeah? Najin White Shield, of course, they're not gonna stop. They wanna keep getting full vision control here. Yeah, they are all over Kaboom's jungle right now. The cocoon lands, but Goom quickly out of that one. Dan's now Gorillas. Quite confident in his play. He'll just walk up straight towards anyone of Kaboom and flay them. Full confidence that the support of his team will follow through. The waves are being cleared, though. So they are keeping them away for the towers for now as we hit the 20-minute mark. So Kaboom at the moment, basically just sitting back, trying to defend, hoping White Shield is going to maybe dive onto them. And then you have the disengage from Jana, you have the ulti from Lep, you have the hourglass as well for 10 on in the mid lane. Try and bait White Shield to be over aggressive and then respond by getting a few kills. Seems to be the tactic for them now, and it's pretty much the only tactic they can use. So they're making the right call right here. Yeah, the split push is working. There's a hook on Tino and has to use the uh -oh. Sonya's Hourglass. This is leaving the top lane tower completely exposed. Danagorn gets jumped on, doesn't quite get taken down. Zephyr going deep on this one. Is it going to be enough? Income save, tries to flash in immediately. Tino flashes away, but everybody on Kaboom is so, so low. Zephyr flashes out of there, gets away with the Valkyrie, I think, at the end of the day. But it is Najin White Shield to push through, and they're going to clean up two towers on this one. The hook on left, followed through. Gorilla goes in. Intervention. Is it going to be enough to save the day? I don't think it is. The tower hits are not enough. And Najin White Shield continue their dominance and push through towards Kaboom's base. Yep, they're flooding into the base at this point. Towers going down very, very quickly. Three members, though, can try and clear out this wave. The problem is, there's also a lot of poke damage from Najin White Shield, so they're extremely far ahead, and they continue to throw these rockets plus the cosmic missiles at you. And then, those take out the minions, opens up a very clear pathway for Gorilla's hook. As we saw, already landed on one onto Tanones, and that earned them a tower right there. So these Najin White Shield uh, sieges, they could just continue to throw out oh, no. Arsenal. Oh no, Danagor walking, wow! Now save showing just how much damage he has built up over this time. It's just the worst feeling in the game when you have no control of the map and you just know wherever you're going to go, there's a high chance you're going to die. I mean, I was on Copenhagen Wolves when we were 0-9. This was every single game for us, just knowing, <laughs> sit under your tower, wait for the enemy team to dive you and then try and kill them and rush a Baron if you do get a few kills to come back in the game. You can never go into your own jungle. It's fully controlled by the enemy team and White Shield is one of the best teams in the world and just taking full control of the map. Yeah, and you just saw actually the bottom lane support. Dan's heading, he was all the way up the top lane. And you gotta wonder how, what he's doing that far out of the base when you are being pretty much sieged in every single lane. Imagine White Shield just driving down this bottom inner turret. Don't think there's much Kaboom could do to keep them at bay here. As soon as Gorilla gets involved, he comes around, causes a presence, takes all the tower hits, and now they go aggressive. Monsoon forcing Watch away as he leapt in on Dan's. And that does mean Kaboom once again are pressured in two lanes. They catch out Goom. They try to go aggressive, but again, just not quick enough. Tinones with the charm was quickly jumped out of with that shadow. And then as this was talking about what can the other teams in the group from watching this game, what, what can they learn? What we see from Najin White Shield is once they get the lead, they take full control, ward up everything, control your jungle, and keep pushing every single lane. 
and Kaboom at the same time once they fall behind. We uh -oh. see them keep trying to fight here, Woo. and it's going wrong. Intervention not available quick enough there. The rest of Kaboom caught out, in they go. Zephyr diving deep on this one. Tino, it's this time. The Zonia Zaragas is only going to save him for so He's alive. long. Watch is taken low, though. He is alive, and Najin White Shield, they take themselves the inhibitor turret. And the thing is, oh, they're still up. up for Kaboom here. They need to chase and try and get some kills. Oh, but they're going to get trapped up. They're fighting the minions instead. They have to keep them at bay. They could have potentially picked up a bunch of kills there. Instead, they still yet to get a single tower. Yeah, and the thing is, Natch and White Shield really aren't giving away very much this game. They've got Guma dead. Everybody was expecting that. Everybody knows he really likes his assassins. Gorilla's fresh. No surprise there. Save on Rise, very popular carry for him. So really, the reasons for the other teams in the group trying to say, hmm, what can we do to pick apart this? It's not that easy for them. It's just to see how they play once they have the lead. Because the jungle, uh, their warding patterns are going to be the same. The way, uh, where, where do they place <laughs> the wards in the jungle? Notice that, how, notice how White Shield didn't try and bait a Baron yet. Dalek it's been was, all about the lanes. Dalekon's just like, I didn't want to get near that guy. He's crazy. <laughs> Guys just say Gorilla does have a blue elixir on right now, too. So the, that extra AP cooldown reduction for Thresh. I mean, once you get the full cooldown reduction on Thresh, the game just becomes that much more fun. Well, a 0, zero 10 support. Not a bad thing for a Thresh player. Gorilla very much dominating this game everywhere he needs to be. Baron started off in the 25th minute and there's not a great deal that Kaboom can do about this one. They dare not go into their jungle, yet alone venture all five members towards this Baron. It's going to be all about the last defend here for Kaboom in their own base. They have home guards already on most of their members. I'm telling a lie, they have it on Tinones at the moment, but the rest of the members <laughs> should buy home guards here. Try and take the fight, disengage, you have to Janna to disengage, go back to base, heal up to full, just wait a few seconds obviously, and then try and rejoin and see if you can pick up a few kills. Problem is, they're so starved. Several of them are still sitting on level one boots here. Can't put home guards on those brown bags. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, the top lane, they tried to catch on Zephyr, but not quite enough. That was all four members of Kaboom in the top trying to lock on towards him. They still didn't quite have the power to take him down. The rest of Najin White Shield moving, start to disintegrate that top inhibitor turret. That will go down. The inhib will surely follow in the mid lane. Save is pushing up with the mid super minions. That's the hook that counts. That is going to be left going down. And Natty and White Shield are looking dominant here. 13-1 in kills, 26 minutes gone. Not a single turret lost for them. There's the flash from Save. They go in. The monsoon blows him away, keeps him off there. But it's the Nexus turrets that will fall. It's Kaboom that will go down. And Natty and White Shield will take their first victory in the World Championships group stage here. Slowly but surely, closing it out. Dominant win in the end. It was nothing to be that we didn't expect, honestly. I mean, it was it was a clear-cut deal from the beginning, but strong performance nonetheless. Yeah, uh, full control from White Shield, White Shield here. We did see Kaboom, uh, what their strategy was going into the game. A lot of folks on the top lane will have left playing the kill, and they wanted to get him ahead here, wanted to be able to counter gank watch, be able to try and gang onto safety and, and get, uh, get him shut down completely. Leb is one of the best top laners here in. Brazil, if not actually the best. So I get the idea of like, let's try and snowball him and see what he can do. Because if Kale becomes super strong, she can also beat a Zed in a one-on-one. -on -one. And I have to say, honestly, all of that top lane play that we saw up there with both top laners and the junglers, it's really impressive how Watch did not take the bait for all those counter ganks. I mean, you can see Kaboom were setting up counter gank after counter gank up there, really trying to count on him trying to come up and save. Save, yeah. but he, he never took the bait. No, absolutely. It was a very confident performance, no doubt about it, for Natchin White Shield. You showed that from the very start of Pick and Ban, Spurs picking a Zed into this matchup. So much so, they're just straight off the stage. It's like, GG guys, we're off. <laughs> they are going to go back to their desk and clear up their apparel. Of course, this is just the second game here in Singapore. First game of Group D, but what do we make of them? Of course, Alliance Cloud9, the other teams in that group, which we'll be signing in two games' time. What do they take from this? What do they see from Najin White Show? Because 
from what we're hearing in the early rumblings, they're actually pretty confident against this Korean team. Well, I mean, Alliance and Cloud9 has been in Korea for quite a while now, mm. boot camping. They're feeling very confident when you talk with the teams. But they also know you have to respect of course, yes. a team like this. Like, Nigel White Shield is looking very, very strong. They've shown 